Hi everyone. The current, second generation Audi Q5 had a facelift midway through 2020. Based on the same MLB platform as the A4, A5 and so on, in Audi's range it sits above the smaller Q3 but under the 7-seat Q7. Key improvements over the old Q5 are in the areas you'd expect, less weight, up to 90 kilograms, thanks to much aluminium, better economy, more tech and so on. New for the 2020 facelift, besides revised LED light clusters and the mandatory more grill styling tweaks, is a 12-volt mild hybrid boost that makes the start-stop system more effective, aiding fuel economy. Inside, Audi bend its gloriously tactile and easy-to-use click-wheel menu system, for a new touchscreen. So, there are more fingerprints, and your eyes are off the road more often. Where's the logic in that? As for engines, with the normal Q5 you've got the simple choice of a 2.0-liter turbocharged petrol or a 2.0-liter turbocharged diesel. Then you've got the Q5 DFSIE, which pairs said petrol engine with a battery and e-motor for low CO2, and thus tax, and a few miles of electric-only range, and the six-cylinder diesel SQ5. All get automatic gearboxes and quattro all-wheel drive as standard. What is it like on the road? Most Q5s come with a 2.0-liter engine of some description, fueled by either petrol or diesel. The 40 DDI makes 200 bhp, and thanks to its new 12-volt hybrid boost allowing more coasting and longer periods with the engine switched off, official economy stands at 43 miles per gallon and 176 grams km. 0 to 62 miles per hour takes under 8 seconds, the Q5 doesn't feel that quick because of its 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox. The petrol in tandem with the 14.1 kWh battery and electric motor of the Q5 plug-in hybrid, which Audi calls the Q5 DFSIE. Available in two power outputs, the 295 bhp 50 or 362 bhp 55, low CO2 emissions of just 49 grams km. Happily it's also quite good, with a smooth, incredibly clever powertrain and impressive turn of speed, the 55 only takes 5.3 seconds to hit 62 miles per hour. Audi claims 26 miles of electric range, with a top speed and EV mode of a handy 84 miles per hour. The FEV is 290 kilograms heavier than the equivalent petrol Q5, and while it remains a comfortable car, you can feel the suspension working hard to contain that extra mass. In general the Q5 drives well enough, like the A4 on which it's based it doesn't really involve you in the process, but majors instead on rolling refinement and safe, predictable handling. The ride is a bit on the firm side so look towards the smaller alloy wheel options to stop it from becoming a problem. So, to the 45 DFSI petrol. It's a pleasant balance of real-world economy and performance, 0 to 62 miles per hour in 6.1 seconds. It's also more hushed than the diesel, and makes a better companion for the Estronic gearbox. It suits the Q5's easy-going gait, and being the lightest powertrain, offers the most engaging handling of any Q5 this side of the SQ5. Audi does interiors better than most. The Q5s is well laid out and solidly constructed, with an appealing design, lots of light and some good tech. There's a new 10.1-inch touchscreen which responds snappily to your inputs, but we lament the passing of the tactile metal click wheel, scrolling through lists or zooming into the map is considerably more fiddly now, and your reward for this convenience is loads of smeary fingerprints. In place of the click wheel, Audi has done. Nothing. There's a small cubby hole that looks like an ashtray which can't be removed for cleaning, but no useful stowage or extra charging points. We prefer the old Q5's cabin. If you're thinking of upgrading from a pre-facelift model, try before you buy. As for space, it's pretty good. The 550 liter boot. Worth bearing in mind that the FEV's batteries live under the Q5's boot floor, so TFSIE models get 155 liters less boot space than normal Q5S. Not ideal. That's really quite small for an SUV of this size. The rear seats are still spacious enough for a couple of adults to sit in relative comfort, though. Very popular and with good reason, the Q5 is a posh family crossover done right. The Q5 isn't a remarkable car in any one way, but it is quite good in a few ways, which makes it a worthy, well-rounded thing. Worth thinking about if you're in the market for this kind of car. It is very quiet, comfortable and practical, if a little dull. Who buys a posh crossover to lob it down a B-road post-haste? The Q5 succeeds as a cruiser, a traffic soother, and critically avoids the pitfall of trying to be too sporty and ending up uncomfortable and out of sorts.
The FEV? It's an impressive bit of tech, but the usual caveat supply. If you're a company car driver then by all means, it'll save you a bundle in tax. But if you're buying for you, think very carefully about the kind of driving you do before committing. Thanks for watching.